Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. And it will actually meet up with everything that I want it to do. There and now up across the field. I can lower that down a little bit like that. And if I just press button number three, cruise control. He should cruise control his way right up across the field without any problem. So this bit in the middle is spraying all of this. It's covering a whole lot. I'm going to lift that boom up a little bit. There's a tiny little strip there that I've left behind. Honestly, I don't care about that. It doesn't matter. And then that one there. That's, no, that did, I thought that was going to touch the weeds, but it hasn't. And we get to there. So I'll turn this one off now. I'll go on up through like that and... Swivel around and we come up to this point right here. So Alt X again to connect up to where we want to start. And then I need to back over here. Like that. And start it up again. And engage cruise control. Oh. Uh, the cruise control, not beacons. I was, I was engaging the beacons just then. I want cruise control on this. So there we go. We are now racing down through with the Hardy. We've got the GPS actually fully operational. This is definitely the right choice. I was umming and eyeing about whether or not a, a, a half a, a million is it half a million euros was a little bit excessive for this. But I mean, it's go big or go home, isn't it? That's, that's the whole point of this series. Um, using this, yes, we're using the GPS to do this ourselves rather than relying on the hired help or anything like that. Mainly because I don't think that the hired help is actually going to go and do the field in the first place. I don't think it's going to cope with it. We'll try it. We will try it next year. But with the sheer size of this machine, it should be able to get across this ground reasonably quickly without causing us any issues. So let's get to that right there. Straighten up a bit. And I'm actually in the right spot already. I can just start heading up across the field now. There, and then when we come back down again, we've got that kind of, the, the dip bit there. That's, that's going to cause us a little bit of a problem, I think, on that. Not too much. It shouldn't be too much. I'm loving this. I'm actually really, like, th this machine is really good. I mean, we've, we've already used up 50% of our tank. And yes, it the boom is having to be staying, it, like, we are having to keep it a little bit up in the air to allow for the uneven terrain but honestly I, i'm not too fussed about that that's that's not like any kind of hardship for us or anything like that um this is going to get rid of any weeds existing in the field right now as well as allow us to uh, sort of po put on a preventative layer and that's that's the more important aspect of this is that we are applying a preventative treatment so that we're not going to go getting a load more weeds later on <coughs> we'll come down through this way. Now here's another bit where it's not showing up as actually spraying on the field. And I don't know how far it's going to do that. Like, cause we, we, we had a solid edge of it all the way down through there. So I, I don't really know why it's done that. I'm wondering if it's because of where the edge of the bought field was. Whether that has had any impact on it. Because, I mean, I look all the way down here. This, this is We're filling in the whole bit all the way down here now, right down to the end. And not one single little bit of that actually needed any spray. So if I come off of there, turning around and getting up the hill is apparently not something that it likes. Go up through to this side. So there may not be very much what... This is a, a good question now. Go to land. No. That was one solid piece there. It's just one big solid chunk. So it's got nothing to do with that as to why we're not applying spray at all on any of this land. Let's do the old X on there and to that point and then start spraying again. And we've now got another stripe all the way up across the field that it's applying herbicide to. So it's something to do with 
it's definitely something to do with how we planted the field. Because that's the, that is in line with where we planted the field. Right, all the way through there, that's the lines we planted the field. I planted the lines over there. And then there was a bit there. And then this bit here, actually. See this stripe where it's come through here? Right on there, there's only about three lines. That's where I left off recording on one session. And then I came back to it just about finished that field. That was when I started up the next round of recording. Um, that was, the, like, last time. It was probably, what, well over a week ago for you guys now. Uh, but that's where it switched over. That's the bit that it switched over on. And I'm wondering if that's got anything to do with it. It seems a bit of an odd marker for it, to be honest. So why is that the bit that's deciding whether or not we've got spray being active on the field? But, I mean, I can't think of any other reason. And I was over here when that bit was being planted. But when this bit here was being planted that we're spraying right now, I wasn't anywhere near it. But then, equally, I wasn't anywhere near the field for most of that bit over there. And most of that bit over there has actually had to have spray go on it. So I have no clue why it's doing this with some of it, but not all of it. It's, it's definitely a mystery. This is definitely one of life's great mysteries. That's, that's what this seems to be. It's, it's just another one of those things that we will never quite understand. The cosmos has put this one out here and it has decided that we will never, ever know the complete truth. The truth is out there, ladies and gentlemen. And the truth is known only to a few select individuals at Realismus Modding. And nobody else. Well, possibly a few other people. There may be some others who have insiders. But I say they're all part of a vast government conspiracy. That's what it is. It's a vast government conspiracy. It's all a big cover-up. And it's all designed to make me look foolish. That's that's all it is. That's, that's, that's what the whole thing's all about. It's all designed to make me look daft. Good job. Good job, people. Your mission, <laughs> mission has succeeded, I think. Right, we'll get up to the end of the field here. I know that it doesn't actually seem to be doing anything, but I'm going to do it anyway, just in case. There, that's far enough. And then we can start folding this one up. Actually, oh yeah, it is It is folding up. I, I thought maybe it wasn't going to fold up there for a minute. So, start doing that. Go this. I, I, I do love this beast of a machine. By the way, it's got the big tank there and then the engine stuck out over the back. Um, Just like... Oh! It did move the wheels in and out. I thought it did. So I need to actually be driving along while I'm doing that. Otherwise, the, the wheels are going to... You, you're just going to rip the wheels off. Right? They're, they're just going to pop off sideways. And it's not going to do it a lot of good at all, is it? That's not the sort of thing that you want to be doing to a new half a million euro machine. You've just gone and forked out half a million euros. You get out of the field. You press the button and ping, ping, poink. Just like that, that's the, the technical terms. And suddenly you're looking at a slightly different... You're looking at the world from a slightly different angle. Because your beautiful new machine has just popped its four wheels off. And the wheels are now lying beside you in the field. I think I'd be a bit upset if that happened to me. If I'd just gone and spent that much money on this machine. I think I'd be more than a little bit peeved if something like that happened. And I went and... Um, destroyed it like that. I mean, I, I probably the wheels themselves wouldn't break off. You'd probably just pop the rubber off. So instead, of, instead of a sort of a pink noise, you just get a sort of, you know, it'd start going. You suddenly you just hear this, and yeah. Sorry if that um, messed you. Any anybody with earphones, I'm sorry if I just completely deafened you by hissing into the um, the microphone right there. Probably not the best thing to go and do. Let's go and put a little bit more herbicide into that one and we'll fill that tank up. While that one's filling, he can just stay there and he can keep doing that. Uh, I'm going to go over to here. You've decided to turn around, get to the point where you're supposed to work, and then say, you know what? I'm confused. I can't do this. 11.52 I had. That was the amount of seed that I had left in the seed drill when I decided to change over, wasn't it? It was 11.52. And I've got 11.53 left in here now. So if I'd gone and filled it back up completely, and then gone back over the field, it would have used up... Because um, I used all of the 11.52, and then I used another one. So yeah, it would have used up exactly the 2,000 litres. 
It probably, if I'd gone back and I'd filled it up when we got to the end of the field before, uh, it probably would have gone through and I would have used exactly one full tank to finish off this field. <laughs> Which is quite remarkable. I think it was 11. It might have been 11. 5. Four. It, it, it may have been. We, we may be like a couple litres out. But honestly, it does look like I would have been exactly... If I had gone back and filled up the tank then, it would have been exactly, precisely, perfectly one full tank in the field. And that would have been finished. Which i got to say would have been quite a remarkable thing to see. That, that really would have been a seriously, seriously impressive thing to see. Now, I'm not going to spray the grass fields. I'm not going to put a herbicide on those. But I do think what we'll do is we will come out with the hardy and we'll spray that field there. We'll do that now. We'll run around that field. We'll do that as a preventative treatment up and down the field really quick. I'll do once around the edge and then we'll go up and down the field and that one will be done. We're not going to need to worry about that anymore. That job will be all complete and finished. Finito. Never, uh, you know, we, just, we literally won't need to do anything else to it. This one here. I got a lot of seed in here now, haven't I? Well, not a huge amount. I got some seed in here now, haven't I? I'm wondering what to do with it. Let's hose the thing off a minute. And then we can decide what to do with it. Go over here. Grab you. Now clean this one off. I mean, I don't need to because this is the least machine. I could just return it. It's a couple. It's only a couple pallet loads. So really, it doesn't actually matter all that much. And then I got the fertilizer. I'm, I'm actually. I'm going to dump it out in the middle of the yard, and I'll see what. Ooh, did I fill up the other seed drill or did I leave it empty? I don't know now. Oh, this seed drill is not completely full, so we should, in theory. Be able to dump out everything that we've got in here. We will be using fertilizer again later. And we can go and fill the other seed drill with the seed that we tip out of here. And then the fertilizer will be able to use that for other stuff later on. So I will bring that one back to there. And I will do that. Fantastic. Just like that. And then we want to take this one over to the shop. I'm not going to take it with the Challenger. I will take this one back to the shop with... One of the other tractors. We'll do it like that. We'll bring you back over here. The hardy can stay there for a minute. I think we'll use the vent there. and We'll run that back to the shop. Let's bring you back over this way. Run that drill back. And that's everything done then, really, for the spring. We're not really... We, we, there's not a great deal more that we're going to want to do. We can't go buying any pigs just yet. Let's, let's scramble out of there. Can't buy any pigs just yet. And most of the other stuff is done. We've got the planting done. The only thing that we haven't yet done is do the weed killer on here, which we're not going to do yet. We'll let, something, we'll let something grow through and see what happens with that. So let's go over to our animals over here. And do we want to get any more or not? I mean, I, 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 I don't sort of think that we do. I think we're doing all right with the animals the way that they are right now. And we're going to be getting a whole load more cows at some point in the future. We're also going to be wanting to make some hay for the cows. Let's just go to here a second. We're going to be wanting to make hay for the cows. If we're going to buy more, what we'll end up doing is we're going to be making another pen out over here in order to accommodate said cows. But that's not really what I wanted to do today. What I wanted to do today was... Well, for the rest of the day, before we, we switch over. And, and yes, you, you probably guess that I have just come back to start a new round of recordings. Um, we've got this pen right here. Now, this is the horse pen. We haven't put anything in here. And I'm supposed to have horses while we're playing. If that is something that we're supposed to have. Now, we've got, uh, we've, we've got some oats in here. We don't have any straw that we can bring in. We do have grass that we can go up and we can get. So we should be able to do something like that. Now, horses, they don't cost anything. And we can have 16 of these bad boys here on the farm. The idea is that we're supposed to have 16 horses. So I don't really know how you go about making money for the horses. It says... Use for show jumping and black Arabian. 
Now it says in here about the whole horse thing, and that this is something that I wanted, that the livery stable horses can be brought to a livery stable to start at the farm. You can care for horses by feeding, riding, and cleaning them. Each day you get paid by the owner for the horse and amount, depending on the care given. Not every horse is as easy to care for. Now we should have the global mod right here. Horse helper, $300 per horse per day. So we should be able to make some money out of the horses by using that and by using the actual horses. So I'm going to try and bring in one, two, I'm going to bring in two of each of the horses like this. And then I'm going to name them all as well. It's going to take a minute. I'm going to go through my book and start naming all the horses. Right. I have got all the horses, and I've got them all named as well. We've got Kaelin Peters, Udo Marga, Matt Cedars, Mad Alex Gaming 34, Phil Bannister, It's No Good, 1977 Rugrat, Tom the Yank, Hans Stager, Tonza Tube, Jempy, Marcus Crawford, TH, Jamie Burt, James Collins, and Dog Rocket. Now, I do apologise if I've done some of the names twice from the last series, because uh, I can't actually remember where I'd gone up to in the last series, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, if there is some overlapping, I do apologise for that. I will try to cycle through names as we progress through this series, so that we don't all have... Uh, we don't just have these same ones here. We'll run in a little bit of water for them, like that, so that they've got plenty of drink. And I want to drop all the way down to the bottom, like this, so the water is busy flowing in right now. Now, you get paid according to what food they have. Oh, they've got to have hay. Oh, dear. I thought they just had to have grass. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. We have to have oats or hay. We don't have any grass. Uh, we don't have any straw, rather. So we can't give them any bedding, but we can go and put in some oats for them. We've got the little trailer that we can use, which we'll need because we're going to need to be able to put around a little bit more than just the small um, bin that we put on the front of that one. For uh, anybody who's been asking, the small bin that goes on the front, that little one over there, that is the... Uh, in the Horsch DLC, which is available on the Mod Hub, and I think that's also on consoles as well. So you can use that consoles, whatever. It, it, it's easy, easy enough to use, available to use. Anyone can use it. Right, there's my trailer that I want over there. Uh, yeah, we'll put the food in first. I'll go and get some food, and... Oh, this is a problem. Can I get that trailer... With that water bowser being there. I don't think I can. So we'll jump over this actually. You know what? Let's jump into this one a minute. We'll move this one out of the way. Because I want to move the. I want to take this one over there on the other side of the yard anyway. Because I want to be loading up that seed. So if I wiggle this one out through here. Like this. Nice and easy does it. There. Squeeze in through that lot in there. And then refill from these like that I don't know which one it's using to refill from but it'll take one of them um, okay there's there's no real clues there if I can bring this one over here we might get all of the seed we sh well we should in theory get all of the seed into this one so I'll bring you over here like this and then refill that one and we'll pick up those two things of seed the other fertilizer that's lying on the floor we'll have to do something with that another time there we go so we got all the seed in that was nice and easy so now i will back that one up around there like that there we go and i'll just put this one over here somewhere just for a minute We'll worry a bit more about that one in a minute. So that one can go there a second. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to get on to um, Skittles over here. It's our Skittles. Bring that one round and just get that water bowser hooked on. You know, we don't need this water bowser anymore, do we? We're not going to use it for anything. Now that we've got all of the animal pens sort of hooked up, if we buy more animal pens in the future... I don't think we will actually use the water bowser for it. Now, the only thing that we might want this for is for milk for the cows, but I don't want it for that either, personally, because 
I would rather have um, a, a bigger tanker, and we put that one onto the truck. So this Bowser here, I can think of no real re I can think of no reason at all to keep it. So we'll run this one back to the shop. As I've got it hooked on, I run it back to the shop, then it's not going to be in our way anymore. We don't need to do it. It's one less thing that we've got in the way that we need to deal with. And then we'll run back home again, and we will do the same with the big seed drill. We'll run that one back down here, and we get rid of that one. And then we'll start shunting other stuff around. We've got that trailer. Well, actually, I suppose I could do the trailer first and, and just move the oats into the horses. We get the oats into the horses, then that bit's done. All right, we've got the oats into the horses. They're dealt with, and they've at least got some food. We want to get them some hay as well. Because that will take it up to the 100% effectivity, which, um, that, yeah, we will do, I think we will do that, but I'd kind of like to wait until tomorrow, as long as we've got some food for them, we've got the oats in there, as long as we've got a little bit in there for them, I think we should be alright, I think we're alright to sort of let it go, so we, we can carry on and go on an, a, another day or two until, ooh, actually... That's the thing. The grass won't have grown by that point, will it? The grass is going to take a few days to grow. So it might be... We may end up sort of being better off if we, if we wait a little bit. If, if we go and do... We, we, yeah, it might, might be better to do the hay now. If we're, I mean, you have a look at the map right here. See, the, this is the land that we own. We own a huge area of land. So it's not like we're going to run out of anything. So what I'm thinking now is if we do that, we could go up and we could just finish making that one there into hay. And we could do that today. We go through, we could mow all the rest of that, turn it into hay, and then we've got a little bit just to keep the cows going. Uh, not the cows, the horses. We've got a bit to keep the horses going. That's all we need is just a little bit to keep the horses going until we're able to get a bigger crop of hay when we've got more grass on the ground. Might be a good idea. That, that might be a good thing to go and do, I think. Um, what else are we going to do? We've got... I mean, we've got the, the other grass fields down this way, which we will be using. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably our best course of action. Let's do it like that. So bring you in under... Let's just get the oats in for the horses first a minute. Let's just do that. So we'll bring you under there. And like that. And then I don't want wheat. I don't want barley. I want oats. We'll put all of that in there. And then we'll run that round to the horses. I don't know how much they're going to take. But we've got just a fraction under 12,000 litres of oats in there. Bring this over this way. And that's going to be the pen over the other side. The sheep there, somebody rightfully pointed out in the last week that we sh we're we not planning to have sheep at all. That that's, that's not something that we're planning to keep. So it probably wouldn't hurt to just get rid of them completely. Drop that into there like that. So, oh, we've only got like a few thousand litres going in there. We don't need any more than that. Let's drop that into there. So there we go, 4,300 litres of oats like that. Um... They're happy, they're happy, everything else seems happy, conditions, um, require straw for clean bedding and water and food to stay healthy, periodically they need to be brushed and cleaned, feed them a mix of the following foods, the best results provide all of it, it doesn't say what happens if you don't give them straw, do they not end up with as good a quality or something? Do, um, I, I would assume that we would lose a little bit of penalty on maximum quality or something like that. There's, there's bound to be some sort of penalty involved for not giving them the straw for the bedding. I don't quite what that is yet. I'm not quite sure. So we, we will find out. we we'll stop that lot off. And I can unhitch his trader again and we'll go and get the seed drill and we'll run off with that one. And then we're going to go up to the meadow, up the top again, with the mowers. And this time we're going to cut the whole thing. And we will... Just bring this one in here like this. Nice and easy. We cut the whole thing up there. And we'll turn it all in hay. Which means that we're going to need to get a couple of other little bits of equipment. We're going to need a baler. And we're going to have to do something with that. Now, I've had people suggesting different balers that we could use. I'm absolutely wanting to go for auto-load features in this particular round. Um, 
Now, th th this is the one thing with the Baylors is I'm definitely leaning heavily towards going not with the, the Coon stuff here. I'm leaning very heavily towards using that case Baylor there, to be honest. That's the one that I uh, appeals to me the most. I do like this one. However, it's a Heston Baylor, and I don't think we've got any auto loaders that will currently pick them up. So for that reason, I want to stay away with it. This Massey Ferguson one here is another one that appeals to me hugely. I really like the look of that one. Um, and I'm thinking that I want to go with the Massey Ferguson one in this map. I want to go with that Baylor right there. But what I'm actually going to do is we're going to increase the capacity up to 8,000 litres. We will do that, and that will justify the extra expense, because 125 rather than 100,000. So we spend 25 grand. If we were to get this one and use the, I think I've got the variable bail capacity mod active on this map. If I don't, I should have. Um, and I will make sure that I do have it ready for when we actually start bailing the hay. And we will change the bales up. We will do what we did in the... Um, Boulder Canyon Super Hardcore series. I will change it up to um, 8,000 litres per bale. So we're still having to handle bales. You're still having to move the bales around. It's just that you've got half of the number of bales involved, which is just going to make life a little bit easier. I'll be using auto load trailers and things like that. I might just get the Arcusan stacker or something along those lines, but auto load is going to be the way forward. We're not going to be manually shunting all of the bales around i have been given a link for a let me just bring that one back over to that corner i've been given a link for a um pecan mixer you return that one yes and return that one as well right that's that done a pecan mixer that has auto load for bales which is just fan schmastic which is going to make life so much easier I don't know if I've got an auto low, uh, not an auto low, I don't know if I've got a pecan mixer here at the moment anyway. Um, I know that we got that one there from the Anderson stuff, there's 29, there's almost 30,000 litres in that one. Uh, there is the pecan big blue mega mammoth right there, it's got 50,000 litre capacity. Now I can change that to be even bigger. Um, but I have been given a link to one of these that does have an auto load ability on it as well. So I can just automatically load up silage bales. And I'm thinking, see, I would like to do a loose clamp of silage. I'd like to do grass silage in a loose clamp. I think that would be a fun thing to do using um, forage wagons. I'd like to actually do one crop like that, at least, with the grass. And um, so we'll just have to work backwards and forwards a little bit doing that and get that one all stocked up and piled up. And then we've got our nice big clamp full of the stuff. That'd be absolutely great. But what I'd also like to do is I would like to get um, silage bales going so that we can use the um, this pecan mixer that's got auto load on it. Because... Just auto-loading the pecan mixer in is going to be so much easier than doing it any other way. Now, I can just to start with, because we have got a little bit of hay left up there in the field at the top, I can take the crone and we can run up there with this tractor and we can go and get a little... Where is my front weight for this one? Have I got a front weight for this one? I'm sure I've got one somewhere and I've gone and just put it down somewhere for safekeeping and safe kept it so well that it's gotten... Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.